we had an absolute goal fest. Um, somehow. I don't know how, but it ended up being a goal fest. <laughs> And welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Bolton. If you are still enjoying this series, drop a like on the video. That would be most lovely. My microphone is moving all over the place. So normally what would happen on a Sunday is Regen Sunday. However, I'm going to push that one to tomorrow and it will then, as usual, be known as Regen Someday uh, because we've got quite a lot of stuff to come up in today's video because we're going to do a bigger chunk of games provided they don't all get rescheduled. So expect like two off camera at this rate. But in addition to that, we're going to try something. We're going to try 3D. Now, we talked about it before. There was a bit of back and forth about it. Still not really sure, but I'm going to put a poll, a straw poll in the description to this video to decide what we're going to do henceforth with this save. Um, because I do think it's important. And I was worried after a while that perhaps not playing in 3D was actually starting to hold the channel and the content back. So something we definitely need to look at. Give me your thoughts after you've seen the episode. Vote in the poll and we'll see what happens. So today we're starting off at home against Southend United, 21st in the league right now. Now, I have made one slight tweak to the tactic based on some things people said. And to be fair, it's a glaring error on my part. And I'll explain that in a sec. So essentially, when I was coming up with this shape, I mean, in the LSD fever dream that this shape appeared from, originally it wasn't going to have an inverted wing back and as such hence why i had overlaps set on but it occurred to me or rather it occurred to other people and then me going of course um not much point having an overlap on the right for a fullback who's underlapping an inverted one some might say now since he does play on attack i am going to use underlap right to try to get kyoso or gethin jones even further forward into that position and i do wonder if that might actually make us even better than we currently are because i do still feel that i like this tactic i like the challenge of it and I want to see how far we can go playing this weird tactic, to be fair. And I want to see if this will help us make this even that little bit better. So we'll try it out today. Watch us now be the first game that we lose in the league this season, even though it makes logical sense. Right, let's do a selection advice and change things around a little bit. Uh, so the only real change is he wants to bring in Slatter. I mean, to be fair, I actually would rather start Regan Booty here, like I intended to in that other match, and then it just didn't happen. Because I do feel like we play better with Booty in that role, even if it's as a Met Salah. I still think he occupies that role really, really nicely. Uh, Jones... His match fitness is not perfect, but I think he's probably good enough to start this match for us here. I want to see what he can do, particularly as he's better on that left foot of his. Although Kyoso, they're roughly the same in fairness. Going to go with Jones for today. We can bring him off if we need to. The rest is history. Now, we obviously really do need a backup for Mengi, but having one libero in League 2 is difficult. Having two liberos, one of them is a backup libero, is virtually impossible. We will figure it out, though. Sadly, Isgrove has that slight knock still, so we're probably not, well, we're not going to be able to get him in the team at all. But I might still put him on the bench just in case. But Delfonso should be able to do us a job there. And obviously, if this is definitely the way we want to go long term, then we'll try to find some more specialized personnel for these roles. I'm excited. I am very excited about this. Now, point finger is something I've been looking at lately. And oh, never mind. <laughs> I found ah, that's better. It seems to work better for the individual instructions more so than it does for the full team. But that's fine. We'll take that. So here we are. First time I've ever done this on 3D, genuinely in the full channel. So let's see how we do i suppose um i'm hoping that it's so weird seeing this shape in 3d as well fleming has such a lot of work to do in this shape and i just hope that you know we don't want to get him injured that's really the key thing for us as mengi's already got three he's already been booked inside a minute <laughs> that wasn't optimal uh last thing we need is a suspension to mengi oh good ball though delfonso is getting into the box nathan delfonso drills it low and wide taylor with the ball over the top and good ship has broken the back line and it's a great stop from carlo ziga wow okay this stadium feels a bit bigger than the uh, University of Bolton Stadium does, but hey, we'll take it at this point, I suppose. Taylor's ball in. That's back post and it's headed away by Gethin Jones, but nobody there on the break. Well, sort of. Cleared away and hopefully Sarsvich can get in there and he's got lots of options, particularly Brandon Fleming, who's moving into that space out wide. There he comes. Here's the pass. Brandon Fleming sets himself on a smashing finish. 1-0. Brandon Fleming, third goal of the season. Booty with the assist. He finds the pass. And I tell you what, right? If we do persist with this long term, finding a winger that can play on that left-hand side with really good finishing could be a great, not a winger, a wing back with great finishing could make a huge difference. Brandon Fleming's third goal of the season already. Lovely finish from him. We have the lead and Booty with the assist. Really good start for us. Another win on the board now will be fantastic. I want to see how long we can go unbeaten. Uh, oh, that's a good ball. And Menke's not going to get there. What's going on here? <sighs> oh, not done yet. Doyle, go on, son. Round the side for Ali Crawford. And it's saved by the goalkeeper. We are playing brilliantly so far. This is encouraging signs, boys. We'd actually go top of the league as things stand as well. Which is even better as Sartovic's header is on target. Oh, no, it's Delfonso. Never mind. Back to the edge of the box for Jones. 
and Booty and Delfonso, and it's saved again by the goalkeeper. Oh, no, it was offside. No, it was a uh, goal kick. Lennon's ball, and Goodship's through here, and... Wow, what a save from Ziga. Still giving up the odd little chance here. We don't look quite as uh, solid at the back anymore. Booty for Delfonso. Can he find Owen Doyle this time? Oh, he's going alone. Nathan Delfonso and well saved again by the South End keeper. Delfonso again picking it up and driving. He's, he looks really good in that role. Jones now appearing. Sarsovic, round the side for Crawford. Tight angle, goes for goal side netting. Wow, what a first half performance. I don't know if it's just because of the tiny change we've made or whether it's just that we're really good against the way South End are playing. It really should be more than 1-0. Intercepted by Callum Slattery. Doyle's onto this. It's a bit of a tight angle. He might he's gonna have to pull this back to the edge of the box. Finds Slattery with a beautiful strike. More like Callum Clattery. That is a beautiful effort. Probably one of the more difficult finishes we've had. Slattery's first goal for Bolton. Wins the ball off the defender well. I thought Doyle had ruined this opportunity. Once he gets it here, though, just holds the ball up, pulls it across for Slattery, and he has whacked this on the volley. In off the crossbar. 2-0 Bolton Wanderers, and surely this win is in the bag now. I've had to bring on Brandon Comley to play as the libero for a bit, and we're going to try and see if he can do the job. Oh, lovely ball around the side for Callum Slattery again. What a pass from Delfonso. Some of the football we're playing is actually very entertaining. Well, it looks like we're going to win this game 2-0, but it really could have been so much more. I've zoomed the game in a little bit more. I think that might help with the uh, 3D a little bit as it's over the crossbar there from Delaney, and it looks like it is going to be 2-0 Bolton, though. Um, a thoroughly deserved win. We look like we're playing much better football than we were even before, and I do wonder if we just made this tactic go to the next level, potentially. It's definitely a good sign of Doyle. Could make it three here. Owen Doyle, tough finish for him. Lovely goal. Owen Doyle wraps up the match for us. Bolton three, South End United nil. Sixth of the year for him. And we've deserved that. We've played them off the park here. Some really nice football in general. This one was a bit of just hit and hope. Maskell lumps it over the top. The defenders missed it entirely. Doyle is sprinting after this. It's just a really nice finish from him. Edge of the box. Drills that home for two, three nil rather. Dieng with the ball over the top, and that's a great ball for good snap. And, well, once again, we've managed to give up a 90th minute goal. Brandon Goodship, rather, with the goal for South End United. They probably do deserve a goal. Just frustrating once again that we just always seem to let our guard down right at the end. But then it could also be because we've got uh, Brandon Comley playing in that libero role. So he wasn't really tracking runners particularly. But we're going to get the win at the end anyway. Delfonso's ball in. And, oh my god, it's in! Eggbury makes it 3-2. Um... Yeah, this is why we need a backup libero. Although I don't know what that would have done about this situation. I think it's just one of those things where it's just a very, very good ball in. And Egg I mean, how is this getting through Delfonso there? And back post defending very, very poor again. It's 3-2. We do rather like giving up the late goals so far this season. We're going to have to cut that out of our game at some point. But the most important thing is we got the victory in the end. Probably could have been more, but actually 3-2 is kind of fair when you look at a lot of things. I still think it's a great performance from us, though. 3-2, something we'll have to look at over time, but pleasing... Ironically, the one position that we changed is the one that played the worst. So there's that. Right. Some games off camera. Back in a minute for another livecom. Let's see. So we've had some off camera games and this was more like it. Crawford with the ball in. Lovely little flick off from Delaney. And there was Alex Baptiste to give us the lead here at home against Port Vale. They played quite a withdrawn system, so it was hard to break them down initially. But Kyoso bombing forward here, going around people. And Sarsovic with this absolutely lovely curling effort in off the crossbar for 2 0 Bolton. He just missed a penalty right before this, too. So that was nice. And then Regan Booty shot tips onto the bar. And there was Ryan Delaney to make it 3 0 Bolton. And as you can see, fairly deserved victory for us. Very important to have, though. Next up, it was a nil-nil at home against Salford City, who were one of the few teams that haven't really uh, lost many games this season either. I'd argue we were the better side, but it wasn't enough for us to actually break them down and score a goal in this match. Again, Mengi, Delaney and Booty were fantastic. I've been getting Mengi off as early as I can to try and save his legs in a lot of these matches, particularly when we get ourselves into a lead. Um, and I've actually played Kyoso at centre-back a few times, despite him being five foot seven, just because we don't really rely on his aerial presence in that role. And he seems to do okay, but it's the best we do until we can find ourselves as some backups. But we're not going to have the money to do that this season. I really don't think... And then it was, in fact, Mengi. Booty's ball in. Mengi with his first headed goal, well, first goal for the club, as far as I know, to give us the lead and the win away at Walsall uh, in the league. A very, very tight game, but I still think we just about edged it and deserved the win. But Mengi, absolute hero for us once again. And then lastly, we had an absolute goal fest. Um, somehow. I don't know how, but it ended up being a goal fest. So 15 minutes into this game, we took the lead. Lovely work again. Kyoso, one-touch stuff. Darcy slips it through, and Owen Doyle puts us in front away at Cheltenham 1-0. Then things got immediately better from there. It was nice work. 22 minutes on the clock. Comley with the ball out wide. Eventually loads of options. Kyoso drops it around the side. Ronan Darcy's then in to make it 2-0. Cruising. Then just before half time, things got even better for us. Brandon Fleming flying to the byline here. Whips it to the back post. Who should be there? But Lloyd Isgrove makes it 3-0. Game over. Except it wasn't. Because literally, I think it was their first shot of the game. Addo with an absolutely lovely curling effort makes it 3-1 and gets Cheltenham back in it. But then at the start of the second half, just as I'd made a couple of subs here to get Mengi off as well, Fleming pulls it back across. Who will be there? But Callum Slattery, lovely little finish in the bottom corner. 4-1. 
And then it started. Cheltenham were just scoring the most insane goals. This one was actually just a simple one from a corner. Still, a good header from Bolton. But then moments later, they got another corner. But this time we were able to deal with it. Until Chapman absolutely pings one into the top of the corner for 4-3. But once again, immediate response from us this time. 62nd minute, Comley eventually will get the ball back here and is able to just bend a lovely effort past the goalkeeper for 5-3. But never fear, as in the 93rd minute, there was still time for one more goal, knocks it down, and another absolutely lovely effort from Adai. Bottom corner, 5-4. I don't know how they managed to score four goals off of that, but they did. Um, a lot of them were just very low XG chances that just happened to be going in in this game. They just scored some really good goals. There wasn't a lot we could do about. One of these games that could have probably been 3-0 to us on another day. But we got the result in the end and managed to score five times. So I guess it's not the end of the world. As it does, currently still leave us unbeaten after 17. 39 points on the board now. Looking very, very nice indeed. Regan Booty's got eight assists. How does he keep being so good? Regan, you legend. Uh, Salford, of course, still unbeaten as well. So we're both unbeaten sides are right up towards the top. It's actually nuts that nearly, well, not nearly, the, approaching the halfway stage in the season, there's actually two teams still unbeaten in League Two. But the fact that we're one of them is crazy. We don't have the best defense anymore. That goes to Port Vale. Conceding four goals to Cheltenham will do that to you. But we do now have the best attack in the league, and I think we're looking even better. With the right recruitment, but I just don't think we're going to have any money to do so, I think next season, this I'm actually really liking the way we're playing. Some really nice football. That extra man in midfield we're basically getting when we're in possession is making us look very, very good and giving us that extra option so often to be able to play through people and get those lovely little intricate passing going. I'm really, really stoked with the way we're playing. 11 wins out of 17. I'll take that. At home today against Tranmere, you'd expect us to make that 12 wins out of 18 and continue this run going. We're six points it's clear of the automatics now and potentially that could go to nine if we win our game in hand which is much much more important for me right now because we really just want to get promoted so let's go and do it so once again more changes will be required um mengi will once again start but i will get him off should the situation require it uh at least we can play a bit more of the sort of standard lineup this time around we had to play some slightly different lineups lately but the one player we cannot seem to move is mengi one thing i will say is that kyoso can play there in fact why is he not even in the team no he has to be in the team um or at least on the bench he can do a job as libero he just cannot win anything in the air that's the one downside of that but he's actually not bad in the other areas of that because he can pass he can he can do a lot of other things so we're going to need to rely on that a little bit here but booty slattery and the downside as well as ali crawford picked up an injury and he's going to miss three or four weeks with a back strain i was originally planning to do more games in the off-camera section but it's, this video has to go up in like an hour and a half and I don't think I'd have time to get it all done in time. So we're going to really make up for that in the videos coming up during the week because I'll actually be back on a normal schedule for recording finally. At home against Tranmere, still unbeaten. The defeat is coming at some point, that much we know, but I beg of you, do not make it today. Let's get one more win here to really see us fly up the league. You've, I mean, we've literally not lost it. The only game we've lost in open play this season was against Burnley. <laughs> I mean, legitimately ridiculous. Also, if we are going to do the 3D highlights uh, continuing on, I might turn it down a notch as Isgrove's through. Oh, what a strike. Lloyd Isgrove dispossesses the defender, scores his fourth goal of the year with a little flip, and it's Bolton 1, Tranmere overs nil. That is a thunder bastard of a strike. I really like that we've got Delfonso and Isgrove in that position. I thought there was a breakaway coming for Tranmere, and for some reason, Vaughn, I don't know who this is supposed to be too. Lovely interception, but he's got a lot of work to do, and that is an absolute drill of a goal and a huge start for us. If we can get 2-0 up, Mengi can come off and we can relax a bit. I do wonder if there's an element of just the players learning the system, getting the links up a little bit too. It's probably making us more cohesive with some of our passing because we do play quite intricate passing sometimes. Wow, our possession. We're up to like 74% possession in this game as the header is just wide from Delaney. We're dominating Tranmere on the ball, which is so good. 73% possession against them here. They've sat back a little bit and the fact that we've got the lead means they have to come at us at some point. And right now they're not really doing that. And we are bearing the fruit of that. We've not been spectacular ourselves, but we've got a lead to hang on to. And that's all that really matters in a game like this. Tram may have to come at us. 72%. More of the same in the second half, please. Just control the possession. If we have to win this one with a cheeky little 1-0 win, like we've got a few of those from time to time, then I'll happily settle for it. I wish we could have got one of those against Salford, but hey, you can't win them all, can you? Here we go. Second goal would be very, very nice, though, because I feel like there's going to be one chance in this game for Tranmere, and I don't want them to be able to take it. Sartovic is dis destroyed by Banks there. Carl with the ball out wide. He's put it through for Vaughan. It's a tight angle. A great stop from Ziga. That's the great thing about Carlo Ziga. Despite the fact he's not facing that many shots quite often, he's pulling out some really good saves in games. Banks. Tranmere getting a bit more uh, creative in this second half. Looking like they might be able to get a goal potentially. We don't want that. And it's Fleming. And oh, well, I mean, there it goes. James Vaughan, eighth goal of the season as Tranmere do find the net. They've come out in the second half with a new wave of uh, energy. It's a lot of games lately and we are struggling somewhat. I feel like Brandon Fleming, he does seem to get there, but then fails to actually make the difference. I don't know if it was Fleming in the end. Yeah, no, I think it was. He... 
I mean, he's right there. He probably should have cleared that or at least put his body in the way. There we go. A bit more like it. Get that ball down. Oh, and again, poor. The distribution's bad. Oh, Delfonso's in. Go on. Yes! Nathan Delfonso, Bolton Wanderers 2. Tram, wow, his entire legs just moved without his torso changing angle whatsoever. Lovely work there. I thought it was a poor ball from Sarsevich, but we've done very well to pull this one out. Although, once again, it was mainly down to Tram bit. Delfonso takes it off the defender. It's a great finish for him. Seventh goal of the season. He's really starting to make a case to start. I get the feeling this game's either going to finish 3-1 or 2-2. Here's hoping for a 3-1. Although Jones has kind of, again, dawdled somewhat there. Oh, intercepted again, but this time by Isgrove. Can he slip it through for Delfonso? Nope. And it's going to get a bit fortunate with the breakers again here. Delfonso's on his wrong foot. Back for Maskell. Blocked again. Booty's there, though. Loads of options with players flying out of the defence to just get in the right areas as Maskell's into the box. Pings it! Oh, what a finish. Jamie Maskell, Bolton Wanderers 3, Tranmere Rovers 1, and that should see this one wrapped up. Once again, the wing-back being the key there. That extra man on that left-hand side, and Maskell was the man on the end of it this time. Nice little ball from Anthony Sarsovic. Sort of baits the defender in. Maskell's there. It's still an excellent finish. Drilled low and hard. Bottom corner. 3-1 Bolton. Come on! I feel like the substitutions made the difference. Getting some players on with a little bit more freshness to them has just enabled us to take the foothold back on this match a little bit. And there we go. Bolton 3, Tranmere 1. The, keep, the referee's running out of nowhere there. That is a good, good result for us. Delfonso and Isgrove playing well. Maskell with a goal as well. I think we deserve the win, but only narrowly. We started to come... Basically, once they scored, we woke up again. And all of a sudden, we're starting to control the game again. Delfonso, great work. We've not lost any matches at all since October. The game, I mean, the games are going to come thick and fast for the rest of the season, so there's going to be problems for us, but we've given ourselves a chance. So next episode, we're going to start with Carlisle. Uh, we'll obviously do Barnet off camera, and then kind of see what happens after that. So if we were to get through, we'd play Blackburn as well, so that'd be an interesting one too. So if you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you have. Drop a like, that'd be awesome. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, and at the weekend. I streamed earlier today, uh, so that, that's why I'm a bit tired right now. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hold your gun, Capybara. Bye-bye.